you've had the surgery. What does it feel like to miss your penis? I 100% feel like a, I was part of some cruel medical and social experiment. I wish somebody hugged me a few years back and be like, you know what, you can present feminine, you can wear heels, hair, whatever you want. But the sad reality, we don't have technology to make you an actual woman. But they kind of like didn't protect me from myself. <laughs> hey guys, the video you're about to watch is an incredibly emotional and intense interview I did with a male to female back to male detransitioner named Shapeshifter. It's going to air in full the day after this video goes live on my podcast channel, The Blair White Project, link in description. And I have a disclaimer. Some people may be confused why I refer to Shapeshifter as he or him despite his presentation, which is still feminine, but that's because the entire point of the story is to show that males who simply are feminine are being told that they must undergo sexual reassignment surgery. Shape is learning to live with the surgeries and permanent damage done to his body and all the health complications, so I encourage kindness and empathy in the comment section. Enjoy, and remember that the full hour plus interview will be on my podcast channel and streaming platforms the day after this is posted. Let's let's talk about that. Yeah. So part of your kind of transition horror story here is that you have a neovagina that isn't working properly. You have mm -hmm. osteoporosis. And scoliosis. And scoliosis. I think that was so yeah. can you talk about that? I mean, it's transphobic to say, but after I've been through the system, I 100% feel like uh, I was part of some cruel medical and social experiment. Except for nobody checked on me. And if I offed myself, nobody, I would not even be included in any statistics. I'm sure they would just write me off as some other issues. None of the people who gave me letters, surgeries. Moreover, I've spent thousands of dollars. I've traveled across the country, was, did all the consults trying to get help. So every time I went to consults, I entered my history, my information. None of those people are studying like the transitioners. So when right. trans community says regret rate is 1% and complication rate is 1%, that's bullshit. It is bullshit. Bullshit and you guys need to hear this. But what they don't really tell you is that the body treats you as a wound um and um it tries it, to close up yes constantly trying to close up oh. in my case yeah it started shutting down right away pretty much so i got a revision like a few months later i was back on operating table and i got blamed at the time that like you didn't dilate enough even though i was religiously dilating and i couldn't understand it's just patient blamed pretty much now that i talk to other people it's the same happened to them, you know, that's what they don't tell you, you know? Oh my God. Yeah. And it's like, um, so they kept on blaming me for not dilating enough. And, uh, so they did the surgery, which they just opened me back up and they're like, you have eight inches. Congrats. And I was like excited. So I drove back to Massachusetts and by the time I got home, pretty much I already lost one inch. I couldn't dilate back up. I was like, oh my gosh. okay, I'm going to save the seven inches. That's plenty, you know? And I was like putting stunts in me, driving a car with a dildo inside of me and with tight pennies, like, to the point that I couldn't even pee. And then my back started hurting like 2020. I thought it was a mattress issue. I kept on like, oh my God, my back hurts so much. If I sit up, like, then I went uh, to chiropractor and he was like, you have uh, scoliosis. And again, like my paperwork is female. So, I, and again, I'm like, don't want to tell like random people that don't need to know that I'm trans, you know, it's like, um, and he was like, I guess if I told him earlier, I would have probably, he would have put two and two together that maybe it was mm -hmm. hormone related. But then I did some more research and I ended up going for that finally bone scan in 2021 maybe i realized i had like osteoporosis in my spine it's pretty bad but honestly my story is not as bad because there's other d trans males i don't know will i have time but like they have it worse as people who have no sensation in their like groin it's i like, saw a viral post yeah. from another detransitioner who said lip, that yeah. you could literally stab yeah, his genitals with a knife and there is no sensation yeah, reachy. and that mm -hmm. is so like, I don't think people understand, like, you know, for years as a trans person, I've been asked, like, my reasons for not wanting the surgery, et cetera. And people are like, well, yeah, maybe you won't be able to orgasm anymore. In their mind, their their head goes to, like, will you be able to still come afterwards? The reality is, for some people, and you're saying for yourself, you can't even have sex. You have had a sex change, and now you cannot have sex. Yeah, it was not a fair trade at all. So, and yeah. plus they didn't tell me there was a study done in Sweden where it showed that Sweden probability went up you can bleep out that word i sorry i said it but like um yeah like i wish somebody told me like one of the therapists like you can do this but you right. will more likely to off yourself 
after this, according to certain studies, why do like why is it all hidden online and nobody talks about it? Why do people have to look for them for it themselves? So this is like really intense for me to hear all this, obviously. It's and it's so interesting because obviously we're coming from different sides of the coin to where right. like transition was a correct decision for me and <sighs> trying to place myself in the shoes of someone who it's not is very emotional. Like, I'm so sorry this has happened to you. I, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. I mean, you've you've had the surgery. What does it feel like to miss your penis? Honestly, like, I didn't miss it up until I started, like, I mean, I missed it, but I couldn't admit it to myself. It was like a sunk cost fallacy. And then I started having phantom limbsing happening. I would wake up in the morning and have dreams about having a penis. <laughs> and then I would wake oh up and gosh. not have it. And it was just so, such a mirror situation because I, so when I was convinced I was a woman, I was like remembering how I was a kid waking up dreaming I had a vagina. <laughs> and now I'm like, I wish I could go back. I made a huge mistake you know but i realized i will never be able to get back my penis and uh it's very traumatic realization and it, it's super sad i mean i don't want to like a pity party but it is sad like i mean i fucked my life kind of i could have been so much more vibrant person and could have accomplished so much more you know <laughs> and um i do miss my full sex drive and i honestly can't even take too much testosterone because it, it will give me more sexual desires and i can't really experience all that because it's traumatic and honestly moving forward i don't even know like what hormones i'm gonna be on and i told them that i was not happy with my transition i was trying to get in touch with one of the therapists who gave me letters uh, and nobody even gave me his email so yeah it's like they really don't care it's like they don't want to even know because why it's a big industry all the surgeons and it only it, is a bad look for them to have a patient say i regret this right because it doesn't align with the general narrative because right. of will make a lot of people reconsider if that's the right step for them i wish somebody hugged me a few years back and be like you know what you can present feminine you can wear heels hair whatever you want but the sad reality we don't have technology to make you an actual woman so and you wish someone would have stopped you from transitioning i wish and my parents tried to but they were not in america and they just told me like uh you know it was more of a religious spin but at the time i was not willing to listen to them you know they just said you know in a muslim religion it's haram you know they said it's like you're going mm -hmm. against God. But if some one of medical professionals said, like, I, I just feel so angry. I feel like these people didn't have my best interests. They never tackled my childhood traumas. They never dove deeper. They just assumed that was like, Ugh. they affirmed me, you know, into this, I believe in, into self-harm. That's what's so, that's what's so dangerous, right? Is that we have these affirming therapists and doctors now who have every incentive yeah. in the world to say, yes, you are trans, this is the issue you're struggling with, rather than try to see if it's there's another cause. And a lot of times there, there is another cause. In your case, there were more causes that weren't looked at. But I think we need people need to go back to a science lab and figure out and have better structured definition of what true trans is. Yes. And this is not gatekeeping. We're in trouble. Like so many, there's already so many kids that regret it, you know? And what's so wrong with gatekeeping? Yes, it, it's, it's like... It's, this is the only medical situation where you get to choose your own treatment plan. Like, what the hell? You get to choose, like, do you just want to be That's on hormones? That's such a great point. Or do you want to take it further with bottom surgery? It's like, That's they should be, maybe point. they should study and be like, okay, in this people, bottom surgery didn't work, or maybe right. bottom surgery doesn't work. Maybe social presenting helps a lot of people. Honestly, I enjoy presenting feminine. Like, it doesn't bother me. I enjoy it. Like, <laughs> so someone should have explained to you that yes. it's okay for you to do that without getting anything irreversible done right. to you. Right. Or even changing my paperwork. I feel like a lot of it is was male, escaping male violence because I was always in an effed up way. I felt like I had the surgery psychologically i knew i was never going to be accepted by other men as a man and maybe it was my way to gain acceptance looking like a woman you know <laughs> and it's like it's almost like i had the surgery to cater towards patriarchy but they also like didn't even give me good results so i can't cater towards them <laughs> like right. it's like really people and all the men that worked on me are just straight men as far as i know and it's like oh, really people you couldn't even give me that's another thing like they literally after multiple surgeries they couldn't even give me a few inches i stay open not even three inches like i'm literally have one inch depth right now and it's like really people Honestly, this transition, like, I lost so many family members, you know, like, I haven't seen my grandma in years. And they loved me no matter what I was, you know, in their own way. My grandma always loved me, but I can't show 
her, myself to her because she always wanted me to have children. Uh, I mean, she will have a heart attack if she sees me, so she may pass away and I will never see her. But now the families that was here that was supportive of me, that live in America, the families that live in America, now the transition is pulling me further away from them because uh, first of all, they're confused. <laughs> sort of all like, um, I feel a little angry. I just feel like they affirmed my delusions. <laughs> and honestly, I feel a little angry towards them. I know it was it's not their fault. Like I own the fact that I signed on a dotted line, but I was just a traumatized kid. Like my sister, she grew up with me. She knew the conditions we grew up in. <laughs> she knew that like I was traumatized. But again, she was like, she's been younger than me. There's no way she could have known. <laughs> but they kind of like didn't protect me from myself. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, so you honestly, have... this is even more isolating. <laughs> so now, like some of my trans identified friends, like that also had complications because when I posted that video years ago, I had a lot of people reach out to me, and they're still. I was like them, and I was convinced that I was just a trans woman with complications. But now that I realize I'm not a woman, <laughs> I was always just a man who got suckered into this. It's almost like I lost the little community that I had, you know. <laughs> Because now I kind of like joined the other side because I was like not being heard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, we're still in minority, even between like reasonable trans people like you, Buck, between like some LGB people, like such as Ariel Scarcella. We're still in minority. I don't know how we're going to stop this on tracks. I mean, there is, there's changing things in Florida. Like there is certain transitioners that are going and trying to testify. Like there's the two trans man abel garcia he's flying to florida like to speak on the behalf of the trans man to show that the surgeries are not safe but like it's being done at state levels one by one and we may lose entire generation of kids and youths that don't need any of the surgeries we're yeah. just making this greedy surgeons rich after being through systems the surgeons don't care about us they really don't for them we're just a meal ticket that's the reality and honestly I'm just speaking out because I will never be able probably to fix, to get any kind of functional genitals, whether it's a tunnel or any further revisions probably gonna actually give me a colostomy back. Maybe I won't be able to pee. Who knows, I'm scared at this point. <laughs> so yeah. that's my reality. And sometimes I wake up, I feel like it's a nightmare that I'm gonna wake up from, that it's some kind of bad acid trip. And it's not, it's my reality, you know? I could have been enjoying having sex with Chinese chasers, whatever. <sighs> my fiance <laughs> but now i'm just like stuck you know so i i don't even know where to start like first of all just thank you for just being so open because this is genuinely i think one of the most powerful videos i will have ever created and just you being so vulnerable and honest like i truly thank you what do you think could have been done differently for for you like specifically like what are the things that doctors need to start doing that they're not doing or switch up do more research first of all like actual science not people like yeah. online taking surveys <laughs> like study the transitioners like i don't know do excel spreadsheet interview happy transitioners such as yourself and buck angel i think one thing that will pop first i feel like the bottom surgery is a big one yeah i feel like that could make or break a happy transition and have oh, of not course happy. hormones definitely need to be studied like yeah. um, male-bodied female-bodied you know cross-sex hormones like better research needs to be done i feel like uh, more people should come forward and be honest about the results because a lot of people are playing it up there were people, you know, playing it up online when I was getting surgery, saying I'm having multiple orgasms. Testosterone is the one that drives most of like sex mm -hmm. drive. Uh, I know some people say progesterone, but honestly, it's testosterone. And like, yeah. from what I've experienced, and um, no, you can't have like multiple orgasms and have natural lubrication. Like some people play it up, unless you got, especially if you just had like penile inversion. Right. They may have some glands, but it will never be a cis vagina. Like stop pretending i sometimes a bitter truth is better than a sweet lie as i said i wish yes. somebody just hugged me and said like you're not you're not a woman <laughs> like you're not never gonna be one no matter what you do and i i mean that would have maybe broke me at the time and some people told me you know i did talk to one chinese chaser at the time and he was like my wife has a surgery and now she's post up with regrets don't do it but when i reached out to trans communities they were like oh it's just chinese chasers they want you to keep their your dick because it's their toy or whatever you know it's like they were telling me the truth, you know, and it's like I wasn't willing to hear it because I was so brainwashed. I was literally convinced like I was an actual woman. <laughs> so 
I hate that we have to wrap this up. I yes, feel like I could yes. talk to you for three hours. I know. But I think let's just hit it home with this. What do you want your story? What's the ripple effect you're hoping from telling your story for for kids and people in general? What effect is speaking out? What do you want it to have? Original blueprint is important. It's not worth losing, at least from male side. It's not worth losing your male sex drive, your energy, um, over to just have a couple of inches in your hips or have maybe bigger breast tissue. I want to say men and women come in different shapes and sizes. Mm. I want to say future run feminine men are not brutalized by patriarchy or just everyone. I don't know why tomboys are considered cute often, but like, you know, the femboys or whatever the firm the soft boys, whatever the correct term is, without offending anyone. <laughs> it's like, I don't know why we're like the bottom of the barrel and that sucks. And I don't feel like the future generation needs to become women just to feel accepted and feeling on demand. You know, it's like right. trans became this hot label. You know, it's like um, being trans is hot. Like people will cast you in the movies and you'll do well in porn and you'll have all these opportunities, but feminine boys don't get the same opportunities. Right. And honestly, I don't know what the fix is. Thank God for, I mean, I don't want to like, obviously some of those influencers are problematic too. They have problematic moments. I don't want to put anybody on pedestal, but at least there's like James Charles and like Jeffree Star. So at least examples, some, examples. like they may never be perfect. I'm not perfect either, but like at least we have some examples. So that's good. I mean, I wish I discovered them sooner. Maybe I would have not rushed into things, you know, but again, I feel like we really have a problem and it's gonna be a huge medical disaster. This is like a sexual lobotomy. This is like lobotomies of 21st century. And like, yeah. you guys heard it here, so. Oh my God, that's so true. And just the fact that like, people like you didn't exist a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Like there was not this wave of detransitioners and now it's starting. And I feel like it's a train that is just going and going. And until people acknowledge that it's happening, it's just gonna fucking keep getting worse. Yeah, honestly, this needs to stop till more research is done. Yeah, I, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, please follow Shapeshifter on all social media. I think your story is so important, and I hope that you know after this you go on to be speaking on even bigger platforms because you need to be heard. So thank you so thank much you for being Blair. here. Yeah.